Good evening. Welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Ankita Mukherjee. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has dismissed reports of an economic slowdown, citing robust tax figures. The Finance Minister argued that improved tax collection data means demonetization has not adversely impacted the economy. However, reports are worrying. A new study by the country's largest organization of manufacturers, the All India Manufacturers Association, suggests demonetization led to 35% job losses and a 50% dip in revenue in micro and small scale industries in the month after the note ban. At the same time, there's been a 60% increase in the daily demand for work under the Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, the Manrega, which could be directly linked to job losses by migrant labourers following the cash squeeze. We debate tonight, will the effects of demonetization last longer than expected, or as the Finance Minister argued today, is the period of pain and inconvenience already getting over with economic activity being restored? Well, joining us on this debate tonight, we have from the BJP, Sambit Patra, Jaivi Shergill, spokesperson for the Congress, joining us. Here in the studio, I have with me Rakesh Sinha, RSS ideologue, K. Raghunathan, president of the All India Manufacturers Organization that has come up with that study, and Mohan Guruswami, chairman, Center for Policy Alternatives. Mr. Raghunathan, uh, let me begin with you. Uh, the finance minister today saying that slowdown concerns are largely anecdotal, that tax collections are up significantly, and that shows that demonetization has not hit the economy. Would you agree with his assessment? And tell us a little more about this study that your organization has done. What are its findings? On 9th of November, AIMO had conducted a detailed study to impact on demonetization. We came up with the first report on 17th what is getting affected, where it is getting affected. Second was on 25th of November. The third report was specifically with regard to job loss in the country, which was published on 12th of December. The expert committee was given a task to analyze from four angles. Angle one was small and micro enterprises. Yes. Two was medium and large-scale manufacturing companies. Yes. Third was medium and large-scale industries engaged in export. Fourth was medium and large-scale in infrastructure. We realized that studies showed that at the end of 32nd day of the demonetization, the impact was fairly largely felt in micro and small-scale industries, including traders. When you say largely felt, uh, could you actually give us numbers at this point and can you also tell us how you arrived at that kind okay. of Okay, we have 14 state boards across the country. Message was sent in a questionnaire format. Mm -hmm. Members were consulted, discussed. The expert committee went outreach of sample studies. Yes. And then we consolidated the numbers into a kind of a percentage. Any sample study can always be debated. Let's understand that. It can be 35%, 20%. It depends upon the sample study. It depends upon the analysis of the report. And if you can give us some indication of uh, the sample study, the sample size that we're talking about here. I think we would have covered roughly about 5,000 industries mm, across, across the, the country. country. Across the country. Yes. Is this data that you have shared with the government? Uh, uh, you've said you've given sort of your early reports in, in, in November and 12th December, but have these numbers, uh, the latest numbers that you have shared with us, uh, been also shared with the government? And, and, and what was their response? See, uh, when the demonetization was announced, we know it's a bold step by the Honorable Prime Minister. We were prepared for our initial shocks, and we were expecting little betterment after two weeks, as, at least as far as trade is concerned. But beyond 31 days, it became in unbearable. We tried reaching out to Honorable Finance Minister's office and the Trade and Commerce Minister's office, seeking an appointment to represent what the finding was. Yes. And unfortunately, we were not able to meet them because of their better other commitments. All right. I think, I, I think that's something we would like to take across to uh, the political representatives on the show in just a bit. But Mohan Guruswami, you've written today in Scroll that the loss due to the unprecedented drop in production and income uh, to the economy is now widely accepted by economists to be around 2% of GDP. That's almost 3 lakh crore rupees. 
when you look at the IMO uh, study, or for that matter, the latest study that talks about uh, this sudden spike in uh, uh, Manrega um, numbers as well, mm -hmm. how do you respond to the finance minister when he says that the drop in economic activity will just have a transient impact, that we pro we've probably already seen the worst of it and it's over? You know, he is the finance minister of India. He has to defend the indefensible. He is, they've taken some steps, which is costing us heavy, and he's trying to mitigate the losses. And you know, politicians, as we know, are economically with the truth. So I think it'll take time, because these things don't happen. So he's talking about revenue going up. I've been in the finance ministry. You don't get information till, which is, or, uh, which is newer than two quarters ago. Mm -hmm. So he would have just been getting some information on the first quarter, maybe second quarter. Nothing more than that. He's talking about the quarter which ended four days ago. Right. Impossible to get that data. You know, he's... Uh, he's projecting or somebody's projecting for him and he's giving it. So you're saying that so tax collection figures that we were given today by the finance minister are, are also a guesstimate at guesstimates best? Guesstimates at best. All these are guesstimates. And we'll have to wait for some more time for the real data to come out. But you can see the pain, palpable pain everywhere. You go to a railway station, you'd feel workers going out. Mm -hmm. you, f you talk to anybody, they're feeling the pain. I myself have a construction site where workers have not been paid for a month or so because there's no cash you know so there is punishment everywhere vegetable growers in my village have lost their crops because there's nobody to buy vegetables so all this is happening and to say that they're not happening and the economy is growing and booming look at other figures don't fit in together hero mode cycle has lost one third of its sale mm -hmm. in, in december uh, credit offtake has fallen by one lakh crores in november then Investment proposals, new investment proposals, yes. they were for running at an average of 88,000 crores till November 7th. Yes. 227 proposals the previous month, down to 177 proposals from November 9th to December 31st. So it's, and the a, total it's a percentage drop of about 61%. No, total investment hmm. proposal drop is to 43,000. That's half, 50% right. gone. Yeah. So, you know, what are we talking about? I think we have got to come clear and say, look, there's pain here. And we'll have to suffer it and come out of it. A big mistake has been made, and we should just try to overcome it instead of rubbing salt into the wounds. Now. Sambit Patra, come in on this. Rubbing salt into a sore wound. Um, are we not? Uh, are, are we seeing a government in denial here? Are we seeing a political party in denial here? See, without any arrogance, rightly said that we should not be arrogant in, uh, ever, and politicians especially should never be arrogant. If we would have rubbed salt into the wounds, then yesterday Bharati Janta Party would not have fared the way it fared in Faridabad's election. If we would have really been uh, unkind to people, the way is being suggested over here, and if 60% of people would have been thrown out of their jobs across the country, and I have also gone through the report of IMO, AIMO, Mr. Raghunath is over here. They have projected that Maharashtra is one of the most badly and most severely hit state. Remember, we won the election handsomely in Maharashtra. If 60% of people would have been out of the sector and the pain would have been unbearable as projected by Mr. Raghunathan, then probably they would not have voted the Bharati Janata Party to power. The biggest weapon that people have to hit the politicians is with the ballot paper, is with the EVM machines. They would have hit us black and blue. But thankfully that they have not done us only shows that they stand rock solid behind the resolve of the Prime Minister that is to fight against black money, which everyone in this country knew was almost like a normal in life. But today, because of the courage of the Prime Minister, a new normal has been set in. Uh, we, we have two eminent people on the panel. I just wanted to ask that Ankita, you, me, Mr. Raghunath and uh, the other important panelists, they all know of the fact that if we wanted to go out to buy any real estate in Delhi, Mumbai or any place in India, we went with an amount in the check and with one amount in a bag or a suitcase because that was the new no that was the normal. Now, if we went to buy anything, okay. there was a pakka, pakka uh, and a kacha uh, uh, bill. Once again, that was we, normal. we, we see, we All see this the goalposts while... being somewhat removed. Let, let, let's get back to what we were talking about. No. Now, Mo Mohan Guruswami, come in on this. Did we hear enough from the finance can minister I, we, we about were, we were the talking concerns? Can I just like. wanted to come on AIMO. Can I yes, ask yes, one please, question to Mr. Raghunathan ji? Please restrict your for, remarks then to the please AIMO. wait for a moment. I'm answering now. Yes. We were discussing. No, I just wanted we were to ask no, Mr. Raghunathan who were the components of the expert committee. 
All right, we'll just come back to that in a moment. We'll come back to that. Please don't interrupt. You're not in parliament. We'll just come back to that in a moment, yes. Now, you see, we were talking about... No, no, I'm not interrupting. You are. You are still interrupting. Because a huge amount of time was given... No, no, sir. A huge amount of time was given to both of you who spoke against the government. So, naturally, the government has to respectfully answer to your queries. Now, we were talking about economic costs. Yes. And suddenly you bring... Political gains. There's nothing to do with it. We're talking about one reality. You know, there's a reality which has taken place. And there are people like today I saw a report that in the Gujarat local elections, Congress won hugely. Mm. Does it mean there's support for the Congress or the policies they had before? You know, it doesn't relate immediately. The, w there are sections of people who feel the pain and that pain has economic costs. We're talking about economic costs here. We're talking about follow GDP. We're follow, talking about f uh, jobs in the unorganized and organized sector. Mm. All <coughs> these things are totally different. Please don't bring Dr. electoral Sir, support you, into it. Would you agree that we tend to hear uh, uh, an oversimplification almost from the BJP when it comes to equating uh, uh, political gains in recent civic body elections, which may or may not have anything to do in terms of a referendum on the demonetization. Now my move. concern is that uh, all the experts, those who are uh, opposing demonetization, they are in fact contesting the normative consensus in this country. That normative consensus is against two things, against black money and corruption. Third is the tax collection. The but are they explain, underestimating no, let, let, the economic No, let me complete impact? because they have spoken a lo lot yes. of things. Okay. And the third is uh, enlarging the uh, base of the tax. Uh, taxpayers. And I think government is successful in all three. Uh, so three points I want to point out. One, Mohan Guru Swami has given a data that is very important that Hero Honda has 31 percent decline in the sale. You know, in December, month of December, all the vehicles, the sale declines because the model changes. So okay. this kind of manipulative data to, to ensure that demonetization has failed is a, is a, kind, of, a, a kind of economic articulation of the political this goal. This is year-on-year year loss. Let, let me, let me, let me year on year loss. No, no, You're I, accusing I, me of lying. This is year-on-year year loss. Oh, no, I don't say. I, yes. I say. I say that in December, in the month of December, because model changes. So that in every vehicle, vehicle sale, the decline of, decline of the sale. Last year also the loss. No, no, decline of the sale. So let me complete, then, then you in, don't interrupt in this. The, the, two more points. One is that that once finance minister is projecting something, the mm -hmm. projection is very important in economy. Every year the economy is projected. If he is ba basing on some st statistics, uh, that projection should, uh, there is no reason to disbelieve. Second thing, second important point is that he is right, that in certain sectors it was expected that th there should be some job loss. But b before demonetization, the real, uh, uh, the real estate was on decline. Why? Because the in, in fuse of the in, influx of the black money in real, real, uh, real estate led the led the, a kind of recession. So I think uh, uh, Sambit is right that uh, econ there was a parallel economy in this country, and th this demonetization had demolished the parallel economy. I think this is a transitional phase. You, we should not we should not base our uh, c conclusion on the basis of one and one and two months. This is a long term agenda, and but I are think you saying people have long term agenda certainly, but also long term effects on the economy because I think that's the concern. That that everyone but is coming Angita, back to? Angita, there is no protest by the people. They are bearing the pain. And I used one phrase, that economic satyagra, because people, are, people know that. All right. they, 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 I believe they, the they Congress wants the pain, to come in on this, but and I'm going back to the experts the, They are responding as in a positive manner to the government. All right. Uh, J.V. Shergill, you had a point to make. I think uh, I just want to make three uh, points. Firstly, it is undisputable that three Ds, if I may say, destruction, disaster, and devastation, is the net outcome of this demonetization scheme. The, this scheme has done an irreparable and an irreversible damage to our economy which can never be compensated. Now, uh, the government has got into some kind of a versus mood. The RBI is predicted numbers in the long run and their stoic sal silence on the, num the, the amount of currency which has come back reflects that the bubble of this long-term gain is busted. RBI has reduced the growth rate in a report last week says the number of NPAs will increase by 12.8% by March 2018. Now you can term RBI manipulative, you can term RBI as anti-national, God bless you. Number three, now the, the point is that these BJP has locked itself in some kind of a palace of mirrors where they are refusing to see the ground reality. The BJP is not behaving like a non-receptive government, refusing to take critical feedback. And the gentleman who was speaking from the organizations proved that, that he wrote three times and received no reply. Now, are the media reports wrong that 4 lakh factories in Firozabad out of which 70% shut down? 2,500 mill workers in Havra Jute Mill were uh, uh, asked to leave. 
Assam tea and coffee makers had to sell their produce at 70% discount. Are these figures fudge? No. The finance minister is merely window dressing by presenting the figures which suit him. He talks about tax collection. Till date, the government has failed to share report card on job loss, recovery of black money, impact on terrorism and counterfeit.